Welcome to the first in a new series of videos here from XDP, where we'll be learning about, looking at, and giving you all the information you need on the CP4 pump. So today I've got tech expert Mike here with us to give us all the information and the education we need to really learn everything about the CP4 pump. So Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. Not a problem. So just getting right into it, what is a CP4 pump? It is a uh, Bosch uh, high pressure fuel pump uh, used in the 11 to present day Ford uh, applications and then 11 to 16 GMs and uh, Dodge a very short run of 19 and 20. All right, so it's in a lot of these vehicles, you know, how does it work though exactly? Uh, well, it starts with fuel coming from the tank, uh, either via electric fuel pump or transfer pump going into the fuel pump housing and obviously just going through the steps until it gets out the uh, pumping uh, assemblies out the high pressure fuel. All right, we got a lot on the table today, and and just what are these parts? How does the how do these things make it make it go? Well, this is the housing. Uh, this would be the bottom end where the main shaft would be in there with the rollers coming down. Um, that's where all the fuel lies in there to actually lubricate all these parts, um, which we'll get into more later. Um, what happens there? But these are pumping assemblies that will actually, as the cam's going around will pump up and start building your high pressure fuel. Okay, and I know that there's two different types of CP4, the CP4 and the CP4.2. What are the differences between those two uh, types of pumps? A uh, little bit difference in cam profile between the two or low uh, profile there. Um, and just other little minor tweaks just to kind of improve on the design a little bit, make it a little bit more and more reliable. And, and I heard you mention early on about how all the different manufacturers use them. Uh, what, what kind of design differences do you see in these pumps uh, varying from the manufacturer? Um, actually, this being a Ford pump does not have the transfer pump on the back side of it, where this and the GM one actually does have that on there, which that is their only supply to this pump. And also GM uses the adapter okay. uh, to fit the front cover or part of the block there. Okay, and a big reason that we're here doing this series is because of the way that these pumps fail. They obviously don't last forever. So why do they fail uh, in the way that they do? Well, for starters, it's fuel quality in the US is not that great. So you're kind of one strike right out of the bat. Um, two, lack of uh, fuel pressure, dirty fuel, um, just not using the right additive also affects these things um, or even somebody does a fuel filter service, doesn't prime the system up correctly. Now you just ran that pump dry, which all that contributes to the big factor here of this main shaft and set in there. Let's grab one of the lifters here. With this roller, although there's plain factors in there, this, as this rotates, obviously rides there smoothly and you know, the spring pressure keeps that down nice and tight. But what happens is, with all these other key factors, is this lifter ever rotates sideways, now it's not a roller, now it's cutting into the main shaft and grinding apart, where a lot of your metal shavings stem from there. And uh, take out the rest of the fuel system, all in the same shot. And before we get to metal shavings, is there anything that shows a sign of failure, you know, leading into that? Um, sometimes yes, some, some trucks will uh, start showing signs of low power, um, maybe even a hard start in the mornings or just something to start queuing it or even in the filter service when you drop that lower filter to really pay attention. Are you getting a lot of metal down there? Is something giving you some kind of a sign there to really go further into a diag? Is my pump bad? And, I, and say I'm driving down the road in my truck and you know I feel those symptoms and I, I pull over and I've had a failure. What does that look like for me as far as cost goes and what does that look like for you as far as the labor on that goes? Cost could be roughly around 10 grand, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, there are kits out there that supply most of the components that you would need. Um, you might have to add a few things here and there. Um, but generally, you know, it all depends on labor-wise. You know, what's the condition of the truck? 
Um, are you changing some of these components that don't come in that kit, like fuel supply lines instead of just flushing and fuel coolers and stuff like that. But you're still in that, let's say, uh, 10 to 12 hour range, maybe a little bit longer, depending on, you know, the entire scenario of the truck. Okay. And before I end up over on the side of the road, is there anything I can do to prevent a failure like that? Yes. Uh, you know, for starters, very good additives, you know, to help uh, with the lubrication and internals of the pump there to really keep these uh, rollers and on the main shaft happy, <laughs> we'll say, just to, to really avoid them grinding a, a part there. And uh, obviously using a, a CP4 bypass kit, that'll really help out and instead of sending all this metal into the entire system, isolating mostly to that CP4 pump. And at worst, maybe going to the tank where you really just have to clean up the tank and really cut back on a lot of time on, on everything. All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for giving us the time and really outlining everything that we you know, need to know to get started here. Um, really appreciate that. Uh, next time, we'll be talking about diagnostics and if your CP4 pump is healthy or headed for catastrophe. But in the meantime, check out all the videos we have on our YouTube channel. And if that's not enough, go and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Keep up with everything that we're doing here at XDP. We'll see you in the next video.